Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in the United Kingdom and today we're going to be discussing case number 10 from our Facebook page. So today's case is kind of a fun case that is uh, full of learning points and it covers a topic that we haven't talked about much before. So let's go through it and see how it goes. This was a 93 year old lady who presented to ED feeling just generally unwell without any real specific symptoms. Um, so she denied any chest pain, she denied any palpitations, she was very vague in her history. And uh, her examination didn't really show anything significant. She's got normal liver functions, normal kidney functions, and normal electrolytes. So she's had an ECG done for some reason. And here we go. So that is the ECG of this lady. And as always, I would suggest you pause the video at this point have a detailed look at this ECG, see if you can come up with some findings and then we can take it from there. Okay, I hope you've done as we agreed. Let's now move on and let's analyze this ECG. Our ECG today is gonna to give us a great chance to go through our suggested approach again and again. And, um, and this time, uh, to be honest, if you do not really follow a specific approach, there is a good chance that you're gonna miss the diagnosis here. So let's move on and go through our suggested approach. We've talked about this many times before. When it comes to any ECG interpretation, my suggested approach is gonna be, check the QRS and ask yourself four questions, rate, rhythm, width, and axis. Then check the P waves and its relation with the QRS. Check the two important intervals that we always talk about, the PR interval and the QT interval. Then check for chamber enlargement, whether it's atria or ventricles. Then have a look for ischemia, specifically check the ST segment, the T waves and the Q waves. And then finally, anything else, some others. So this is the suggested approach that we're gonna apply now to our case. Here's our ECG. And let's start with the first four questions about the complex. What's the rate doing? What's the rhythm doing? What's the width like? And what's the axis doing? Looking at the rate, the rate in here is, um, is 51. Uh, so this is our rate. So 51, so we are on the slow side, we're on the bratty side. And uh, looking at the P waves, we've got an upright P wave in the limb bleeds. And um, we have got an inverted P wave in AVR, so that is a sinus rhythm. So we have got so far sinus bradycardia. Looking at the rhythm, the QRS um, intervals, they look regular to me. So I think we've got a regular rhythm here. The complexes are narrow and the axis is slightly, I would say, rightish. We've got, uh, sorry, leftish. So we've got a positive complex completely in lead one and um, a bit of negativity here. So it's heading towards being a bit of a leftish axis deviation. So sinus bradi, um, regular rhythm, narrow complex, leftish axis deviation. Moving on to the P waves, intervals and enlargements and ischemia. So the P waves, I can only see one P wave before each complex. Um, and looking at the intervals, so the PR interval is 235 and it's more than five small squares so the PR interval is prolonged it is fixed so that is a first degree heart block looking at the QT interval it is 494 so that is uh, on the prolonged side so we've got a prolonged QT interval so prolonged PR interval prolonged QT interval no specific signs of um, enlargements in this ECG and um, in terms of the ischemia, I can say that the T wave is inverted in AVL, is inverted in V1 and V2, uh, but I cannot really see any significant ST elevation or depression or Q waves anywhere in the ECG. So in summary, so far, we have got the following. We've got sinus bradi, we've got a first degree heart block, and we've got long QT interval in addition to some non-specific T wave changes that we've seen in few leads. So that is it so far. 
moving on to the last and final question of our ECG interpretation approach. What else can we see in this ECG? And there is another finding in ECG that we should pick, and it's going to give us the clue to the answer for this case. And that finding is the voltage of this ECG. This ECG showed low voltage. So let's talk about this topic. So what is low voltage ECG? Well, basically low voltage ECG has got, it's got many definitions. Some of them are sensitive and some of them are specific. And in ED, we're always interested in the sensitive uh, stuff because we don't want to miss anything. So the sensitive definition of low voltage ECG is um, either or the amplitude of all the complexes and um, in the limb leads, they're all less than five millimeters. So um, less than five, 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 less than five. So if that is the case, then this is by definition low voltage ECG. Or you can change it a bit and say that the sum of the complexes in lead one and two and three are less than uh, the sum of them is less than 15 millimeters so less than five anywhere in the limb leads or sum of one two three less than 15. that is the first definition or there is a second definition here which is the amplitude of the complexes in the chest leads are less than 10 millimeters and if we apply this to our ecg we will notice that actually no, this is not the case in here. This is uh, definitely not m less than 10 millimeters, not less than 10, not less than 10, and not less than 10. Or the sum of V1, V2, V3 is less than 30. And again, this does not apply in here. If you, if you um, combine this with this, with that, it is definitely more than 30, 30 millimeters. But the definition of a low voltage ECG said either or. So if the limb lead rules apply, then you do not really need the chest lead rules and vice versa. So by definition, our ECG is showing a low voltage ECG because the limb leads were less than five millimeters. So what can cause this? What are the causes of low voltage ECGs? Let's put this in a, in a nice diagram. So let's say that this is our heart and uh, this is the sternum and we're looking from a lateral view. Sorry, excuse my drawing. So that is our sternum in here. And the ECG dots are in here, trying to detect the electricity coming from the heart. So your heart will be producing the electricity that will travel all the way to be detected by the electrodes. Options to get low voltage ECG are going to be either the heart is not producing enough electricity to reach. So that is option one. And this can happen with any kind of infiltration to the heart, like what happened with amyloidosis or sarcoidosis uh, or with myxedema and hypothyroidism. Uh, it can be because of a big loss of the myocardium, like with advanced cardiomyopathy or with um, a massive MI. So that is the first option. The heart is not really producing enough electricity or actually the heart is producing enough electricity to reach, but there is a barrier in the middle. And this barrier could be air in COPD. Um, it could be fluids in pericardial effusion and pleural effusion, and it could be fat um, with obesity and uh, high BMI. So let's summarize that. Causes of low voltage ECGs. It could be either the heart is not producing enough electricity to be detected, or there is a barrier. The barrier could be fat, could be fluids, and it could be air. If the heart is not producing enough electricity, that could be because of an infiltration to the heart, could be because of myxedema and hypothyroidism, and it could be because of loss of um, variable myocardium, like with advanced cardiomyopathy and with a massive MI. So in this slide, this is the summary of the um, most of the causes of low voltage ECG. As, a, as general rules, if you see an ECG with low voltage plus tachycardia, think precardial effusion. 
And if you see low voltage with bradycardia, like our case, think about this diagnosis. Think about hypothyroidism. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about what hypothyroidism can cause in an ECG. So hypothyroidism can cause sinus brady. You've got no thyroxine, so you turn brady. Causes low voltage ECG. It causes QTC prolongation. And it causes T wave invergence. And it's widespread nonspecific. Uh, it causes first degree heart block. Everything slows down. And it causes some ventricular arrhythmias. So these are the changes that you might see in a hypothyroid case. So shall we go back to our case and figure out what happened? Let's apply what we've learned to her ECG. This was the ECG. What we can see here is sinus brady, first degree heart block, low voltage ECG, especially in the, um, in the limb leads, one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF. We've got long QTC, We've got T-wave inversion in AVL, V1, and V2. So, um, so this was what raised the suspicion in this case that this is um, a likely hypothyroid case. She's had thyroid functions added onto her bloods that confirmed the diagnosis of, um, of hypothyroidism. And um, she was admitted for investigations for that, had thyroxine replacement, and, uh, and she did well. So, so that was an interesting case that I thought I would share with you um, to learn how to apply the, um, the approach to uh, interpret ECGs and to talk about the important differential diagnosis of uh, low voltage ECG. So in summary, what we've talked about here was, we've talked about low voltage ECG and we know now that it is the amplitude of all complexes in the limb bleeds less than five millimeters or the amplitude of the complexes in the chest leads as uh, less than 10 millimeters. Any of the two is enough. Causes of low voltage are either the heart is not producing enough electricity to reach the electrodes, so that, that will be with any infiltration to the heart, so amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, hypothyroidism, and, um, or um, with a significant loss of myocardium, like with advanced cardiomyopathy and with a massive MI. Or it could be because there is a barrier. The heart is producing enough electricity to be detected, but there is a barrier in between which is um, fat or fluids or air. We've also talked about low voltage with tachy. This is pericardial effusion until proven otherwise. And low voltage and brady. This is hypothyroidism until proven otherwise. So this is it regarding this week. And here we go, the final section of this talk, which is about this picture. So, where do you think, guys, this uh, place is and what is it called? If you know the answer, please feel free to put it in a comment under this video. And, um, and this will be it for uh, this time. So, uh, thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you very soon. Stay safe. Thank you.